Working Perspectives Podcast presents WPP News. Fun fact, I've been using an anti-sex bed since my marriage in 2018. <laughs> Hosted by Matt Lavelle, Liam Reese, Steve Cabot, Justin Richardson. Vice President nominee for Donald Trump's Republican candidate is none other than J.D. Vance, son of Bob Vance of Bob Vance Refrigeration. New episodes every Tuesday and Friday. And it's one, two, three drinks and you're going to rehab at the old ball game. Please remember to like and subscribe. Turns out this will be the nicest thing said about Diddy in the last few years. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Working Perspectives Podcast presents WPP News. I'm Matt Lavelle, accompanied by Liam Reese, Mikey Metagon, and Jay Dub. On this show, we bring you the internet's juiciest news stories and reporting on everything from the ban of banging in the Olympics to Eminem dissing Diddy and a manscaping mishap in Miami. We're going to head now to Liam Reese, who's going to be us the latest with entertainment news. Liam, what's the story? The Emmy nominations are out. The Television Academy released the nominations for the 76th Emmy Awards Wednesday morning. FX's Shogun leads the way with 25 nominations. The Bear received 23. Altogether, FX Network did pretty good. They had 93 nominations, but uh, Netflix ended up having the most as far as networks go with 107 for shows including The Crown, Ripley, and Baby Reindeer. Uh, the latest season of The True Detective was up there. They had 19. And now that all those announcements came out, I realized that I don't watch any good television. Also in entertainment, the new Twister sequel is coming out soon, and director Lee Isaac Chung was asked about the movie referencing climate change. Chung says he doesn't think movies need to preach a message, and that's certainly not what cinema should be, which is totally awesome. I already wanted to see this movie, and now I know I can just go see a movie without being talked down to by a bunch of rich dickheads. The rest in entertainment? We talked about it last week. Alec Baldwin, case has been dismissed. He's a free man. And go on to make awesome movies again. Drake's house flooded, but uh, probably has a bunch more. So screw that guy. And some country broad absolutely bombed the anthem, but we're going to hear more about that tonight from our one and only Jalen Duff. I'm Liam Reese. And that's entertainment. Excellent stuff, Liam. Thank you for that. I'll tell you, if Lee Isaac Chung keeps this up, he'll be nominated for president. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent stuff. We're going to keep it moving. We're going to keep it on moving down the road. We're going to head to the one and old Mikey Metagon, who's going to give us the latest from the Olympic Games. Mikey, what's the story? 2024 Olympics has banned sex on site on scene in Paris, France, where rumors are everywhere that in the athlete's village, special anti-sex beds have been set up to curb some of the horizontal boogie. Over the years, there's been many stories in the media of wild romps and sizzling sexcapades among the most fit athletes from every corner on earth. One two-time gold medalist who remained anonymous said to me, and I quote, I've seen people having sex right out in the open, on the grass between buildings, on balconies. People are getting down and dirty. This year alone, being in the world's city of love, 300,000 condoms will be on hand in the athlete's village alone. I spoke with CEO of the anti-sex bed company from Japan, and he told me his air weave beds are specifically made for athletes to attain recovery, deep sleep, and are very sturdy. He went on to say that, and I quote, sex is sex, whether it's on our mattress or someone else's. And uh, all I know is if we want to up the health in this country and advance the human race? It's probably not a bad idea to let our Olympic studs breed with one another. With that, I'd like to wish all our USA competitors luck in either winning a medal or getting busy on a balcony. USA! 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 
Thank you for that, Mikey Medigon. Fun fact, I've been using an anti-sex bed since my marriage in 2018. <laughs> Very good. We're going to keep it moving, keep it on moving down the road. We're going to head to the one and only J-Dub, who's going to give us a run on the presidency. J-Dub, what's the story? New vice president announced. Exciting news from the worldwide news desk. Vice President nominee for Donald Trump's Republican candidate is none other than J.D. Vance, son of Bob Vance of Bob Vance Refrigeration. Uh, J.D. Vance's stepmother, Phyllis, when questioned, said that she's very proud of him and said that working for a paper company for so many years, she can't wait to get out and about and help paper trail the campaign with him. Rumors are Donald Trump pushed for Vance himself on the suggestion of Donald Trump Jr. So uh, can't be a bad one, right? Matthew, back to you. Thank you for that, Jada. When researching this position, we found that the vice presidency is the second most useless job after a high school guidance counselor. <laughs> Excellent. Very good. We're going to keep it moving. We're going to keep it moving on down the road. We're going to head to old Uncle Matty live in studio with the latest on the gossip around the podcast scene. Old Uncle Matty, what's the story? Hello, I'm Old Uncle Matty, live from the WPP News News Desk. Tonight's first story, Bobby Altoff isn't sleeping around. The viral podcast host has been the subject of rampant speculation about her personal life, with rumors swirling about romantic relationships with her celebrity guests. In a recent post, Altoff vehemently denied ever having slept with any of her podcast interviewees. The comedian and podcaster expressed frustration over the persistent rumors and insisted her focus is solely on creating entertaining content. Following up on this story, we found out that once you go black, you usually get divorced. In other news, Eminem slashes Diddy. Eminem is reigniting a decades-old feud with Diddy. The rapper has unleashed a scathing attack on the music mogul in his latest album, targeting multiple allegations against Diddy. From referencing sexual assault claims to other controversial topics, Eminem doesn't hold back. This latest salvo is sure to send shockwaves through the music industry and ignite a firestorm of controversy. Turns out, this will be the nicest thing said about Diddy in the last few years. We're going to send it back to me. Thank you for that, old Uncle Maddie. We're going to keep it moving. We're going to head to Liam Lashmise Reese, who's going to give us an update on the Sunshine State. Liam, what's the story? Mission Impossible, Florida man style. A Florida man was arrested after an alarm went off in a new Smyrna Beach Walgreens around 3 a.m., despite the store being closed since 10 p.m. Security footage shows Christopher Morgan enter the Walgreens at around 9.40 and walked into the bath. There, Christopher stayed for a whole five hours, not appearing again until 2.42 a.m. Morgan then began roaming around the store, grabbing snacks, including Tostitos, spinach dip, some Reese's Cups, Girardelli chocolates, a Dr. Pepper, and last but not least, a fresh pack of Newport cigarettes. Police helped the man open the door from the inside as the alarm blared in the background. Morgan was pretty calm, all things considered, until the moment the door opened. Morgan, of course, resisted arrest, spit on one of the cops, and is now being charged with burglary, larceny, resisting, and battery on law enforcement. Back to you, Matt. Thank you for that, Liam. Excellent stuff. And thank you, as always, Florida. Uh, when questioning the perpetrator, turns out this is all a big misunderstanding, and he just fell asleep in the bathroom. <laughs> Very good. We're going to keep it moving. We're going to head back to Mikey Madigan, who's also in Florida, and he's going to give us the latest on a gun gone wrong. Mikey, what's the story? Miami man shoots his man meat on site on scene in Dade County, Florida, where the weather is hot and the people are retarded. Police have identified 36-year-old Key Largo resident Livion Guerrero Prado, who shot himself in the junk and in front of his girlfriend. Mr. Wage War on my wiener was in an altercation with his girlfriend's ex in which he pulled a gun from his sweatshirt pocket and fired at his girl's ex-lover. And by no one's surprise, Private Pecker missed his target. But as he returned his weapon to his hoodie pocket holster, he accidentally discharged another round that blew a hole in his hog. After firing on his fuck stick, Mr. Damage Dong ran into his girlfriend's third story condo to hide the weapon that brutally beat his meat. After he attempted to flee, but passed out in the parking garage from blood loss through his mangled member, Cops arrested him and took him to the ER to heal his hit hammer. Then ushered him into the prison 
where he's now facing murder charges on his girlfriend's ex. And I hear a second charge of cruelty of Cox is coming too, which could face the death penalty. So Godspeed to you, brother. Michael Medigan in the hole of hell they call Florida. Back to the studio. Thank you for that, Mikey Medigan. When asking the girlfriend what her opinion was of the shooting, she responded by saying that she was just so impressed that he hit such a small target. <laughs> oh! Excellent stuff. We're going to keep it moving, keep it on moving down the road. We're going to head back to Jalen Dub, who's going to give us the rundown on the drunk from the All-Star game. J-Dub, what's the story? Star-spangled booze bag. Ingrid Andreas says she was drunk during the national anthem, during the All-Star game. She says she's going to go to rehab to improve her life and get her things back on board. And I, for one, appreciate that honesty and approve of it. And I think it's a good thing. I'd also like to make a statement that, first off, who's not drunk at the All-Star game? I uh, I heard an alleged story that she had a little bit too much of that water that Bryce Harper brought for Alec Bohm, and that may have been what happened before the All-Star game. But either way, some other notable bad anthems, Roseanne, who was drunk carl lewis who sounded drunk and that little girl who uh philly legend mo cheeks had to help out well would have been underage i don't think she was drunk but those were all bad anthems and the people got through it so good luck to her and carry on with the best of your life ahead of you getting clean and sober and no longer allowed to sing at all-star games matthew back to you Thank you for that, J-Dub. When questioning Miss Andrea, she responded by saying, and it's one, two, three drinks, and you're going to rehab at the old ball old game. game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. We're going to keep it moving. Keep it on moving down the road. We're going to head back to old Uncle Maddie, who's live from the WPP News studio. Old Uncle Maddie, give us the latest. Hello, this is Old Uncle Matty, live from the WPP News studio. Patrick Mahomes Sr. arrested for invalid license. Patrick Mahomes Sr., father of the Kansas City Chiefs superstar quarterback Patrick Mahomes, is facing more legal trouble. Just months after being arrested on a felony DWI charge, Mahomes Sr. has cited for driving with an invalid license. The incident occurred in Tyler, Texas, the same city where his DWI arrest took place. This latest setback comes as Mahomes Sr. is awaiting trial on the DWI charge, which carries a potential 10-year prison sentence. The ongoing legal issue surrounding the elder Mahomes has cast a shadow over the family's otherwise positive public image. As the legal process unfolds, the public is watching closely to see how this will impact the Mahomes family. In other news, even after the multiple arrests and mishaps, he's still not as embarrassing as his TikTok queen of a son, Jackson. Back to me in the studio. Thank you for that, old Uncle Maddie. And speaking of Jackson Mahomes being an utter tool bag, this has been another episode of the Working Perspectives Podcast presents WPP News. In case you're wondering, you can find all our stuff and all our content on all podcast platforms and YouTube at Working Perspectives Podcast. You can us on Instagram at Working Perspectives Podcast. Enjoy us on Twitter and TikTok at Working P Pod. And if you'd like to be a guest on the show, please email us at workingperspectives at gmail.com. And please like and subscribe. We'll keep bringing you this sweet, sweet content. Thanks for listening and have a great weekend. Thanks. See you. Thank you for watching the Working Perspectives podcast. Please like and subscribe.